Hi, W6WUH, Larry in California. Uh, as you can see, we're looking at the Gonset Commander II, circa 1954, 1955. A very diminutive uh, AMCW mobile transmitter. Um, to, to do with uh, the matching passive uh, Gonset VFO. Uh, this goes on to a connector in the front and uh, turns the crystal oscillator uh, into a, a Colpitz uh, VFO oscillator and it works very well. Uh, this transmitter has been on my bucket list to get for more than 30 years and my good friend Eddie uh, K6ZMI uh, set it aside for me in his mind uh, all, this, all this time ago and uh, finally it uh, it came over here to live with me, so I'm going to be its uh, curator for uh, <laughs> until I shuffle off the mortal coil. Anyway, so anyway, this uh, this is a low power AM transmitter. It can be run with a uh, 300 volt uh, uh, vibrator power supply or um, a 450 volt dynamoter or uh, an AC supply, whatever you happen to have. Uh, it can uh, have its filaments wired for either 6 or 12 volts. In this case, they're wired for 12. Uh, not hard to change. Um, connector on the back of the radio uh, allows you to separate the, uh, uh, the low B plus for the modulator and the oscillator from the high B plus for the uh, final amplifier tube. Um, in this case, we're running both on, uh, on 300 volts and... Uh, uh, maybe we're running 20 watts input or something here. Uh, not very much. Uh, we've just got it wired up with uh, test leads uh, and alligator clips. Um, I don't have the proper Jones plug in the back to uh, wire up a proper cable and this is really just uh, the initial test but uh, it uh, it's fired right up. I'm very pleased with the way it works and I wanted to show it off because really there are no videos uh, uh, on the uh, on this transmitter at all. Rather than using a uh, a band switch and a whole bunch of coils, uh, uh, it uh, uses plug-in coils for the final and it's got a little band switch for the oscillator. And uh, it uses one coil to cover 80 and 40 meters and another coil to cover 20, 15, and 10. And then should you want to work it on 160 meters or 6 meters, you'd use a separate coil for that. The tank circuit is just a uh, uh, classic tank, tank circuit, a, a coil and a capacitor, and then it's got a link coupled output rather than a Pi network output. Uh, those couple of turns of insulated yellow wire are picking off the RF inductively and coupling it back to the antenna connector. So uh, that's it, very simple. Uh, there is no antenna uh, loading control other than uh, moving those links and uh, to tune the uh, to uh, resonate the final you adjust the the capacitor there uh, here's the grid tuning uh, and grid drive uh, the meter is switchable between uh, grid current and plate current and uh, there's the there's the meter switch uh, you have the option of uh, getting higher output out of the oscillator for more drive, which I don't know, might be necessary on six meters or something. Uh, there's more than enough drive with either the crystals or the VFO with this in the low position. So you get a lot more drive, but it uh, is of no no use at all on on the lower bands. So that's the uh, tune operate switch there, um, and uh, the phone CW switch. Uh, this on-off switch connects just uh, to a pair of contacts on the back and you can use it to turn your power supply off and on or whatever you want. This radio uses the uh, Collins style mic plug. Uh, not a standard quarter inch plug but the kind of plug you usually see only on carbon microphones. Um, very few uh, radios, excuse me, use that uh, use that kind of a plug for um, a crystal or dynamic mic. 
Uh, this radio has a switch on the back apron, and when I do the second video, show you how to hook this up, I'll show you that. But anyway, there's a slide switch on the back, and you can choose between using a carbon or dynamic mic. Uh, didn't seem to want to work with carbon mic, so I've got... Uh, I happen to have a dynamic mic with that small plug on it because I SBE uses that. So uh, <laughs> I had a microphone. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at this thing. Uh, uh, let me just plug in the uh, the B plus up into the uh, test supply here that we're using right now, and uh, you can hear the uh, hear the oscillator, and uh, you can see the. The oscillator tuning right there and uh, we'll put this uh, in the uh, operate position and uh, make sure we're tuned up right oh, sorry got a lot of audio Hello, one two, one two, one two. Uh, this thing has a uh, uh, a built a built-in speech clipper, and if you uh, try to exceed 100% modulation, it will uh, start clipping. And uh, of course, that'll boost your talk power. And uh, at some point, it gets uh, objectionable. But I've got this gain all the way up here, one two. So <clears throat> got a little bit of hum. It's still got the original filter capacitors in there <coughs> there's only uh, there's one three section electrolytic in there uh, which is a cathode bypass cap for uh, the modulator and uh, a couple other things and I haven't changed it yet so it's got a little hum plus we're using clip leads for all the filaments and everything however interesting little transmitter um, I'm running just maybe 300, uh, 300 volts on the plates, but as you crank that up, uh, every every 10 or 15 volts is giving you another watt of output. So um, if I get, to, I'll switch it around so I can run 400 volts on the on the final, and uh, we'll probably see an output around uh, 15 or 20 watts. You figure that the thing is going to run, wants to run. 2830 watts of input and probably about half of that for output but with uh, tons of audio okay so this is a this is a basic overview let's look at the tube complement while we're here basically a two tube transmitter 6AG7 uh, crystal oscillator 6146 final just absolutely classic and uh, the audio section is a 12 AT7, which is a dual triode like a 12AX7. Um, so there's mic amp and speech amp. Um, this is the uh, driver transformer, which goes from uh, single plate to push-pull grids for the 7C5s. 7C5s are just a Loctal base version of 6V6. And uh, that's the mod transformer. So those tubes are rated for... Uh, 14 watts output uh, uh, at uh, 315 volts. Um, uh, do 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 do, and uh, so that'll modulate 28 uh, 28 watts of input for the transmitter. Um, obviously, if you're going to push the input of the transmitter uh, beyond that, um, you're not going to be able to modulate it 100 uh, percent. Probably with the clipping that this thing has, if you modulate it at 90%, <laughs> nobody's going to notice because it's going to be a high average. So that's uh, that's the basic uh, uh, overview of the transmitter. Next time we'll take a look at the, uh, the back panel on the underside and how to hook it up and run it.